Now in our next example, it's very similar to the one we just previously got done doing. It says the test scores for the first period math class are listed below. I want you to represent the data as a dot plot. So in other words, you have the same instructions. The only difference this time, notice our data is a lot more spread out. It appears that our smallest data point is 65 and our biggest data point is at 90 and I think, no, 99. So in other words, I'm going from estimating, I'm going from 100 to 60. So I'm going to have to get 40 data points on my number line. Well, I'm not going to do that. Let's instead, let's count by fives. That makes sense? Because that will give us a little bit less. So in other words, I'm going to go from 65 to 69. That'll be the first five numbers. Then 70 to 74. And then 75 to 79. Then I'll go 80 to 84. 85 to 89. And 90 to 94, and my last one will be 95 to 99. So I'm going to put my dot. I'm going to put my dots in bins, pretty much. So 75, we'll go in 75 to 99. 80, we'll go from 80 to 84. 90, 92 goes in the same one. 65 is our first one. 70. 75, that'll be stacked twice. 95. 90. So you have three of them now. 92. 99. 65. 75. And 88. You can also do this on the calculator. So I already put my I already put my data in. So if you want to pause the video and type your data in Desmos, this time I'm still going to type in functions. I'm still going to cl click on dot plot. I'm still going to use x1 because that's my column that has my row. Then I'll go comma. Well, instead of putting one, let's put in five. Now notice we've got some answers. We've got some choices here. My X value, I'm going to click on bins. That way it's going to put them together. And I'm going to put my bin in the center. There's my data. You just have to adjust it so you can adjust your graph so you can see it. And notice the difference if I go exact, then I won't get my data points at the end in nice bins like I, I did the others. If you go left, it's really not that big. You're putting at the left end of your bin, the dots, where we kind of did it by hand by the center, and that's the way I suggest you do it. On example three, we want to make a bar graph. A bar graph we're using qualitative variables or categorical data. In other words, they can't be put together in numerical order or they can't be quantitatively justified. So I'm not going to do this on the calculator. It's just going to be straight by hand. We have categorical data. Your bars are going to be separated by spaces. So I'm going to abbreviate here. I'm going to go C for country. H for hip-hop, M for metal, and R for rock. My biggest data point is 35, so I think I'll count by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, kind of running out of room here, which I didn't really need to. Let me see if I can adjust this so we can see the whole graph pull that down so we can see it then. So 25, 
30 and 35. So country goes up to 13. Hip hop is 35. Metal is 20. Oops, I went too far for that one. Let's try that again. And finally, rock is 32. And so when you make your graph, make sure you label it. So we'll call this like favorite music. And then we'll put the type in the x-axis and we'll put students on the y-axis. And there you have it.